In commemoration of Tesla's 168th anniversary, Dr. James Corum posted a two and a half hour lecture on YouTube in which he explains why he believes Tesla's world system was based on Zenek waves. You will find the links in the description. Although I genuinely admire the work they have done, I have to disagree with their conclusions. Let's dive into the details. What was Tesla's world system? Nikola Tesla, as he explains in his most famous article of June 1900, the problem of increasing human energy recognized that humanity would be best served if it had a source of clean energy. That energy would be available anywhere on the globe, in any amount. And people had a means to communicate with each other, no matter where they were. Tesla developed a system that would make all of this possible. To do this, his system, consisting of large towers, would pump as much electric charge as possible in and out of the earth, creating standing waves in the earth. These waves can be tapped anywhere to provide energy, and they can be modulated to carry messages. The first of these towers was built at Wardenclyffe, New York. And with three or more such towers at appropriate locations around the world, these waves can be used to triangulate one's position, thus giving us a global positioning system. It is argued by many that this system won't work because such waves are impossible. What are Zenek waves? Zenek waves are surface waves that travel along the interface of two media with different electrical properties, much like waves on water. Only these are electrical waves that travel over the surface of the Earth, following the Earth-Air or water-air interface. For over 70 years, these waves were considered a myth, but now they have been proven to exist. To efficiently produce a Zenek wave, one has to create a rotating electric field, very much like the rotating magnetic field that made Tesla famous. But are Zenek waves really what Tesla had in mind? In his lecture, James Corum explains how he and his brother Kenneth first assumed Tesla was using Schumann resonance. But the late director of the Tesla Museum in Belgrade, Dr. Alexander Marincic, set them on the path of exploring surface waves. James now argues that Tesla specifically mentioned Sommerfeld's work on surface waves when he tried to convince people of the viability of his system. The theoretical, mathematical background largely matches Tesla's claims. He and his brother have experimented with Zenek waves and found that practice matches theory on the 29th of September, 1899, Tesla drew an electrical diagram in his notebook, and James points out that the coil shown therein is a phase change coil needed to create a rotating electric field. All modern electrical theories are based on Maxwell's work. The fact that the Corum brothers can underpin Tesla's claims using Maxwell's equations will convince many scientists who have rejected Tesla's work to reconsider their position. The most fascinating fact that I got from Coram's lecture was that he proved that it is possible, just like Tesla claimed, to send electrical power wirelessly around the world with only very small losses. I also share his deeply felt regret that Tesla wasn't allowed to complete his project. There is no doubt in my mind that the world would look very different today if he was given a fair chance. Listening to his lecture, trying to understand the math and the points made, one gains a deeper understanding of electricity and how it can be used. However, it would seem to me that Tesla had a different method in mind. Tesla was very clear on that his method relied on pumping charges in and out of the Earth, thus creating a standing wave inside the Earth with a frequency of 11.77 Hz, or a small multiple thereof. This frequency is found by sending a pulse into the Earth and receiving its echo 85 milliseconds later. To achieve this time, the pulse must travel diametrically through the center of the Earth and back at the speed of light. If that pulse were a surface phenomenon, it would need to travel at superluminal velocity, faster than the speed of light. This is problematic for two main reasons. 1. Einstein's theory of relativity tells us that nothing can travel faster than light. It's a cosmic speed limit. And 2. If something could move faster than light, it could, in theory, arrive somewhere before it left its starting point. This would break causality, the principle that causes must precede their effects, potentially leading to paradoxes that violate our understanding of physics. These issues make superluminal velocities highly unlikely, 
if not impossible, in our current understanding of the universe. The Coram brothers have verified the 85 millisecond echo, and so have I in my experiments, and this is my main argument against their conclusion. Also, I do not believe that one could create a standing Zenek wave around the Earth, because these waves contain a longitudinal component that would cancel out if a wave meets its echo. Tesla clearly states that a standing wave in the Earth's electricity is the key feature that makes his system possible. Referring to Tesla's 29th of September diagram, if you read the accompanying text, you will quickly find that this is not a phase change coil, but a coil to raise the electric potential. Tesla describes here what I have explained in the conclusions of my latest book, a method for safely conveying extremely high potentials to the cupola of his tower. Nowhere in Tesla's notes, and I have seen more than 10,000 of them, performs Tesla the necessary calculations for such a phase change coil, nor does he mention such phase change. Now, it is true that Tesla refers to Sommerfeld and Zenek in defense of his system, but in my opinion, he does so only to show that there are ways to accomplish worldwide wireless power transmission. But Tesla's way differs on some points from what they describe. Then how did Tesla envision that his system would work? Let me preface this with a disclaimer. I am not saying that Tesla is right or wrong. It is too early for such a judgment. I am only trying to understand Tesla's theory behind his work. Once that is clear, then we can put it to the test, and only then we can say if he was wrong or right. From Tesla's 1892 lecture, we learn that Tesla believes that electric effects are caused by a gaseous medium immersed in the fluid ether. Both positive and negative charges are a result of interaction of this medium with matter. The earth is filled with this medium, and Tesla proposes to create longitudinal waves in this medium at the frequency of his spark gap. This frequency should be 11.77 hertz, or a small multiple thereof. These waves inside the Earth create electric effects at the surface of the Earth. This, of course, is not covered with Maxwell's equations. For example, the electric permittivity of the vacuum is considered a constant, while in Tesla's view, the exact value depends on the density of his medium. Tesla does not appear to have a very high opinion of Maxwell's work, and said on more than one occasion, that we have to study the ether and the functions it performs in order to advance science. We, the Wardenclyffe Research Group, have experimentally confirmed that there are rhythmical variations in the electric permittivity. Unfortunately, the base frequency of these variations was 7.5 Hz instead of 11.77. This frequency suggests a surface wave and not a density wave through the center of the Earth but something that doesn't happen naturally may still be possible. The last word has not been said on Tesla's theories, but I think there is strong evidence that Tesla did not intend to use Zenek waves. As the Coram brothers also emphasize in their lecture, the importance of Tesla's work cannot be overstated. And instead of boldly disregarding his work and theories, I think we should first try to fully understand them, I feel confident in saying that we will find hidden gems. As Kenneth Coram rightfully said, if you do what Tesla said he did, you will see what Tesla said he saw. This is true in my experience, and this is the reason why we should take his work seriously and do whatever we can to recover his theories before they will be lost forever. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and or support my work through Patreon. All relevant links can be found in the description.